السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and they not except on a state of Islam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful bestow upon us the gift to die on the state of Islam. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amma ba'd in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by uh, al-imam Muslim and other of the muhaddithin. And this uh, narrated on the authority of Abi Hurayrata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. In this hadith, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بدأ الإسلام غريبة بدأ الإسلام غريبة إسلام started as something strange وسيعود غريبا كما بدأ and he will return to being strange as as or the way it was started قال فتوبة للغرباء blessed the strangers uh, at that time or then توبة للغرباء it's really a glad tidings from the Prophet ﷺ to call the people who are going to be after the beginning of Islam, but the Islam is going to come back in a straits of being something strange. And we are almost or in reality describing the society that we live in or the world of today. However, al gharibu and let me please allow me to use the, the word al gharib and the gharib is something strange and al gharibu also it is the stranger al ghuraba is the plural of the strangers so al gharibu in reality in the arabic language is the one that is far from his home someone is stranger foreigner someone who is not like far from his land and so on 
But in reality, the, this aspect of being stranger, it's really a part of the nature of the human being. When we say part of the nature of the human being, because in some you know, circumstances, situation, states, someone will feel like he's like a foreigner, outsider, uh, you know, stranger, he feel like he's gharib. And if you give a definition, comprehensive definition of what the meaning of the gharib, the gharib in reality is the one that he is like disconnected or away from everything that he is accustomed to him or to her. Like, you know, something that, you know, far from what they get used to. And that is the gharib. Even you find people, even they go to another place and they sleep on different bed that their own bed, they feel stranger. If you offer them food that is not the food that they are used to it, they feel kind of, subhanAllah, kind of odd, stranger. So this is the gharib. In reality, it's part of who we are as a human being. But here the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Al-Gharibu is something is good, so blessed are the strangers. And we want to understand this, this fact, this reality that the Prophet Sallallahu is describing in this hadith. All of you, mashallah, you know this hadith. But what are the aspects related to that? It's thinking of something strange or being stranger, something odd, being like being stranger is being an outsider, or being a stranger, it's really the quality is a quality, is a virtue that the believer need to find and need to access and need to elevate himself and herself to that level of being stranger. Now, Al Imam Al Nawawi rahimahullah said in the explanation of Sahih Muslim, uh, in which in the Sahih Muslim this hadith was narrated, Qala Al Ghuraba, I mean, you know, talking about this hadith, how Islam started strange. قال إن الإسلام بدأ في أحد الناس وقلة. Islam started with very few people. Started with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and spreading the message and so on. قال ثم ظهر الإسلام وانتشر. Then the Islam was manifest and spread all over. قال وسيلحقه أي الإسلام. And Islam will be affected by short, you know, aspect of shortcoming, but not Islam, the body of the people implementing the Islam, because the Islam is the revelation of Allah and the way of the Prophet ﷺ that's intact, that is Ali al ulu al kamil This is in its aboveness, nothing can touch him. But the action, how to implement the deen of Islam, the deen of Islam is going to be touched by a lot of shortcoming and defect. Qala fayaudu hatta yaudu fi ahadness. Till Islam will come back to be among only few people. And these are the ghurabe that the Prophet Sallallahu called. However, the first, the first aspect of gharaba, of being gharib, of being strange, uh, not like the second one, because the second one happened when there is a lot of Muslims. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the hadith, when the companion, they asked him, are we going to be in small number? He said, you're going to be like in a big number. However, this uh, being strange in this time, it's like someone like really disconnected from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the stranger. So you find most of the people, Muslim, are not really following the path of Islam or are not adhering completely and fully to the way of Islam. So among them, those who are Ghuraba, those are the blessed ones. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he said Tuba, Tuba, it is the explanation of Tuba. Uh, in some of the interpretation, is paradise, is the Jannah. Well, Tuba also is a tremendous a giant a tree in paradise under which the, uh, the one who's Rakib, like someone riding, he will ride under this tree for a hundred years. So, which is understand that the gharaba, to be gharib, to be stranger in this time, uh, leads to your success, leads you to paradise, that the meaning of it. When the Prophet said, blessed, tuba, is like tuba will be for this gharaba. So, we'll understand like the believer, he has to be a gharib. It's like we are understanding. It's like should I will be like people outsider, should be like look at odd people, stranger. But this is what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, and we want to understand how you know we factor this and we pour it within our life, and how can we, in a way, you know, uh, help ourselves to understand it to really inquire this great virtue that the Prophet ﷺ given us the glad tidings for. Now. If we look at the, uh, the, some of the other ahadith, the same ahadith coming from different riwayat, and particularly the one that narrated in Al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, who are these strangers? Who are these strangers? 
قال قالوا من هم الغرباء قال الذين يصلحون إذا أفسد الناس those who correct those who stand for justice those who reform those who enjoy good and forbid evil when people they go wrong when people they will be you know acting in 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 wrong way when the people they will be spreading mischief that's those al ghurba therefore we understand here al ghurba allati al ghurba this ghurba that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam describing is something totally different than being someone subhanallah you being like a ghurba of loneliness or being feel like subhanallah you know pushed away that you are like lonely and feel like that wahsha inside you feel like you know Uh, depressed anxiety you don't have anybody to talk to that's not it that's not it because the prophet ﷺ said blessed are the ghurba however we find out like this ghurba is a necessity for the believer today because if you do not feel this feeling of ghurba then we truly we are far from the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we're going to explain so the prophet ﷺ said what it means then to be gharib to be gharib someone is going to give you the evidence that you are on the right path yes you are on the right path if you don't feel stranger that's why people subhanallah today you have the call of normalization they want to normalize everything every mischief they want to normalize to be accepted they want to bring like all the faiths together to make one only faith and they call it tasamah and they call it you know forgiveness and you know this uh, this you know tolerance and so on so all of that is it really call to uproot the believer from his system of the deen then to be stranger it is really require striving and stranger in this case it is an evidence of that you are on the uprightness as also being stranger not only to give you the evidence of being uprightness as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam He's described that you're going to be the one who's standing for justice, the one who enjoying good and forbid evil. Then when you feel the fact that you are not like other people, not like the surrounding, surrounding around, it, around you, you feel then that, that you have that ability and that responsibility to spread the goodness, to spread the justice according to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, If we just also reflect on the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu we'll find something else which is really a core into the system of being or gaining this virtue of to be stranger to be gharib which is if anyone seeking honor anyone seeking might anyone seeking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call it izza no one could get it only if he is a stranger or she is a stranger therefore the gharaba to be gharib and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be a stranger person the way that is described by the prophet sallallahu it is really the foundation the base of the honor the base of the power the base of having that mind that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believer with described the believer with so when we try to you know give a definition of a gharaba then the gharaba it's not that odd one it's not like to feel like strange to feel like being a stranger among people to feel an outsider to feel a foreigner no it's not that it's not that al gharaba to is like you follow a deen and you feel yourself like the only one who doing it because most of the people around you they are following other things so you feel gharib al gharaba to is that into your way of belief into your way of the evaluation of things when you talk to people they use totally different references they use different criteria which not the criteria that you use because you use the criteria based on the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you'll see yourself sometimes even gharib stranger in the way how you pray because the people around you they're not praying the right prayer you feel gharib you feel a stranger because you're following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because none of the people around you even mention the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the way as he's being the role model everyone has a role model the role model that they have how to make more money the role model how to have how to get great career but the role model to be the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so you feel like gharib your heroes that they are really close to your heart are those subhanallah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regard highly in his book those who fulfill the covenant with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when most of the people they heroes are even movie stars or singers or things like that so you are gharib and this is very good to be gharib 
So this is a great equality, it's a virtue to be ghari. And one of the, actually the greatest of al ghurba is to be like this thing, to be a stranger. When the strange thing is related to the criterion, the criterion it is the line of demarcation between good and bad, between truth and, and, and evil, between the truth and falsehood. Why? Because every party, political party, or every subhanallah system, or every, for example, a tyrant, or every new program that someone has been elected to put, he's going to define the line between the good and bad. They're going to define the line what is the truth and what is the non-truth. When the believer, when seeing people like that, he's going to feel a stranger. He's going to feel like something strange because his line of demarcation between good and evil, between bad and evil, between truth and falsehood is being defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you the path to that criteria in the taqwa. Ya ayyuhu ladhina amanu inta taqwa allaha yaj'al lakum furqana. Or you believe if you just be righteous and pious, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gift you and honor you with the gift of the furqan. Therefore, a believer must be stranger in the society. That's a sign of health of his iman, a sign of being on the right path, and a sign that he can gain the honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a fact. How can it be how a person, a true believer, will not be feeling stranger when we are in a society and in a word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet describe it, qala tara shuhan muta'an wa hawan muttaba'a wa dunya mu'thara wa i'jabu kullu dhi ra'yin bi ra'yin. You'll see a greed that is obeyed, whims that is followed, worldly life that is preferred and put it, subhanAllah, on, on the highest pedestal. This is to be worshipped. And قال, and everybody is happy and following his own opinion. So we must be stranger in a society or a world like this. That's why when we have our young ones, they talk like they're suffering from peer, peer pressure. Said, what suffering? What peer pressure are you talking about? That is who you are. You are a believer. You must be a stranger. You should not feel this pressure because this pressure of a system that is not yours. And you see, subhanAllah, everything, everyone has to belong to something. And this is all the social media and everything is like, subhanAllah, belonging to something, to adhere to something, to gain my honor. When the honor only in the hand of Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا Therefore, when a, a, a person, he think about this aspect, then he said, being a stranger, being what people, they look at me like odd. Someone, people, they ask him, for example, we are invited at work, and then at work, when they have this meeting, they have alcohol. And you say, I don't drink. And if it's not related to a contact or related to work, it's something that hanging out after work. I'm sorry, I cannot come. He said, this person is like strange. I said, Alhamdulillah, yes, I am strange. That's who I am. And this is what makes you feel strong. Not fake you like feel defeated. What should I do? How, you know, to be pleased with me? I don't want to look like odd. No, be look. Look at odd person. Yes, because you are a strange person. And a strange, and the strange that has, subhanAllah, that positive aspect. That, uh, you know, when people, they look at you like that. And actually, it's not about people how they look at you. About you, how you behave. It's about you, how you behave. So this is an aspect and virtue in the believer that he has and she has to strive to elevate themselves. Because if you don't feel that feeling, therefore you are one of them. Which is mean that you are far from the path of Allah. You have been fully desensitized that you do not know exactly where the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The second aspect in being or attaining this virtue of being gharib, is it's not something that you feel you know lead you to feel lonely it's not something that you feel you to, to make you feel defeated it's not that gharaba that it caused you to lose your self-esteem no this gharaba actually what boosts your self-esteem because when you are in the situation you are in peace and tranquility why because you are in connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well, Al Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was like striving for the fact to spread the right way of the Sunnah. People they plot against him, 
and subhanallah he said some beautiful word and to understand like even whatever people they plot against you nobody can take that happiness from your heart my paradise is in my chest whatever I go it is with me put me in a prison that's the time of retreat for me killing me that is the shahada and it is granted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from me to me and to have exiled me from my home from my town from my city is actually going and traveling in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the believer when he's been attaining or in this level have the, this virtue of feeling gharib that's how you're going to have a delightful life because if not you're going to be mimicking you're going to be imitating you're going to find the try to find an honor when it does not exist because the honor and the might and the pride only in the hand of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah gave us reflection he said you look at these people for example they are rejoicing and everything what they rejoicing in the news what they rejoicing what you see it subhanallah in the in the social media everyone subhanallah brushing themselves and they want to look in the best image and that's in the image that the shaitan will trick you with it'll trick you with because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to reflect if sometimes you go through difficulties and you really feel heard and the shaitan come to you said look to these people how happy they are but they're not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they suffer as you suffer but the big difference because that's the nature of a human being the big difference but you hoping from Allah what they cannot hope from Allah you ask and Allah patience Allah give you patience you ask Allah peace Allah give you peace you ask Allah tranquility, Allah give you tranquility. Allah, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard you, Allah give you that. But then the one who desensitizes, he will not even make the dua. And the one who does not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's already will not be able to make the dua because he does not know Allah. Therefore, when you look, the people subhanallah who are not stranger in the way of Allah, they are a stranger in the way of their natural life how the how this people they do not know themselves people they are stranger to themselves they don't know who they are because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala nasullaha fa ansahum anfusahum they forget Allah Allah make them to forget themselves that to have why you see people running in every direction to entertain themselves to play just to forget just to forget to not think about that loneliness inside them that is the ghurba that heard that is the strange factor like to be stranger that is the one that is dark within the self that what bring depression that bring anxiety that's why people they fall into addiction running from themselves when themselves is between the two sides and then subhanallah they're gonna go to the worst of the ghurba to the worst of the ghurba which is at the time of death they feel very stranger and then in the grave they feel very stranger and then when they stand up in the day of resurrection they feel very stranger because they use the criteria to live and to abide with what is not the criteria of allah then they're going to be forgetting as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll forget about them as they forget about this day but you the believer you leave the stranger here to be honored to be honored by a connection with allah that give you the tranquility and peace and give you the delight to be honored when you think about the forgiveness of the angels to you imagine the greatest of the creation within the throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the carrier of the throne that are making dua to you even when you are sleeping this is the virtue of you being true stranger and every creation from inside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they make an istighfar for you and then the glad tidings at the time of death from the angels that you are accepted by Allah and then the glad tidings to be subhanallah transported to the highest of the heaven to be announced to you the pleasure of Allah and then what the glad tidings 
to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you lived your life as a true stranger and a stranger that is positive and a stranger that give you subhanallah that true life inside you and the third point the third point the shaitan the cunning of the shaitan he's transforming changing the definition of the stranger he's telling us being strange is like to be odd to be peculiar to be someone subhanallah outsider you have to belong to people you have to be with them look at them how they're doing and that's subhanallah the trick of the shaitan then when someone he fall into this trap what he's going to find or trying to look for he's going to look for to find a home for his emotion a home for his emotion he's going to find a place where he's going to boost his or her self-esteem and when they find this place they adhere to it when they adhere to it subhanallah they become their personality is seed is being seen into this system into this party into this group that they adhere to they become subhanallah the protagonist in fighting for such a thing why because they become like part of this group and this adherence make them to feel like who they are define who they are and i give you the example the example of the group of the lgbt or the example of things and they talk about pride and they want to make something out of it is pride when it's not for subhanallah everyone and all the social media is about how to find a home for the emotion to boost the self-esteem which has become like what reflect who you are so many people subhanallah totally lost for the believer to be a stranger in this world is a must if not he will be subhanallah melting his personality will melt all his subhanallah who he is or who she is is going to go scattered into this adherence that's why as you make the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have also to celebrate the oneness of the adherence to the system of allah you cannot compromise you cannot subhanallah try to get something from other people who can help you boost your self-esteem allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said do not take allies from other people who follow the other scripture because they have other systems they're going to subhanallah have you to change your deen and by changing your deen you change everything inside you that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see the people who have disease in their heart they are running among them they saying we fear that anything happened to us or befall on us so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is not allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has everything in his hand the dear brother respect his sister when you understand the prophet وسلم, said blessed uh, successful are this ghuraba it becomes like this ghurba is a necessity for the believer and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us toward the end of surah hud qala fa lawla kana min alquruni min qablikum ulu baqiyatin yanhawna ala alfasad illa qalila fil ardi illa qalila mimman anjayna minhum if there were people in the past generation that they forbid mischief and the act against the mischief allah would not have destroyed them but he did Allah because the absence of such a people except few of them those few are the Ghuraba and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah said Allah will not destroy anybody as long as they act in justice act righteously so as a believer the core of how to elevate yourself to the value and the virtue of to be a stranger gharib is to hold fast to the book of Allah is to hold fast to the sunnah of Allah and being a gharib is an honor and being a gharib that's how you're going to be glorified by allah and you'll be you know uh, accepted by allah when he left from Egypt and to save his life when he came to Madian he said Ya Rabbi lonely sick stranger so it has been told to Musa how can you be lonely 
And there is no one who provide delight and provide cheerfulness in the heart like me, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كيف تكون مريضا وليس طبيب مثلي؟ How can you be sick or suffering from that when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is a shafi? وكيف تكون غريبا؟ How can you be stranger? The only stranger is the one who didn't establish a relation between me and him. So here in the saying of Musa or like in this narration to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what make you gharib. So the gharib is an honor. The gharib is a quality. The gharib is a virtue. And the Imam al-Hassan al-Basri, he gave us the aspect of this ghurba, of being strange or to being, or being stranger. He said, لا تذله الدنيا The worldly life cannot humiliate him because or humiliate her because the people see subhanallah submitting want fame want power they humiliate themselves to get to those positions the believer who's gharib he does not he's free from such humiliation and the believer he will not compete to get the honor from this dunya why because his honor is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in some if he want to have this level of this beautiful aspect of ghurba not the one that give you loneliness, but the one that give you, make you delightful. The one that put cheerful, sheer into your heart and make you cheerful inside. Is to ask Allah to bestow upon you the light of Allah. Because the more you're trying to get the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you're going to be speaking by the way of Allah. Listening and hearing by the way of Allah. Talking, walking, acting. Even subhanallah, defending yourself by the way of Allah. That's the hadith. Qal, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the sight with which you see and the hearing with which you hear and the food that you will which you go. And this is subhanallah, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you have the light of Allah, certainly you're going to be stranger because anybody else around you who are not adhering to the same thing that you're adhering to, they're going to be stranger to you. And you're going to be stranger to them. But that is a fact. And that fact make you near to Allah. And no one can find happiness only to be near to Allah. Therefore, being stranger in the society. And do not care and liberate yourself, especially for our young one, from that peer pressure. And liberate yourself from any adherence or anything that people, they feel like self-esteem, you know, adhering to certain group in the social media. If you liberate yourself, and you become a true stranger, then that's the path how to find happiness. Because Allah will give you what He called the Prophet ﷺ, the delight or the coolness of the eye, is only can be achieved in the way of Allah, in our nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us the gift to be pious, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us the gift to be follower of the Prophet. ﷺ. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a light with which we walk among people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower us with more than double portion of his mercy and forgive all our sins. Allahumma ja'anna min ibadika al-muttakheen. Allahumma ja'anna min atba'i nabiyika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ja'al lana nooran namshi bih. Warzukhna kiflayn min rahmatik. Waqfil lana dhunubana ajma'in. Birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اجعلنا من الغرباء الأتقياء الأخفياء الأنقياء اللهم اجعلنا من الذين ينالون الطوبة التي بشرنا بها نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة يرحمكم الله